Welcome to Window Shop with Current Driver. This is the weekly show where Current Driver editors, staffers, uh, contributors, and friends uh, join to face a challenge and look for cars on the internet based on that challenge. This week's challenge is to find guilty pleasures. And we're sort of going to dive into what that means. I think it might mean something different to all of us. Um, but basically, it's cars that you're not exactly proud of loving, cars that don't really fit in with your typical car worldview. Um, this week, we're joined by contributor Jonathan Ramsey, uh, senior editor Joey Caparella, uh, contributor John Burley Huffman, and testing director Casey Colwell. Uh, we didn't talk about order, but um, what's that, Casey? And deputy testing director. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I promoted promotion. you. I promoted you. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, you want to kick it off? Sure. Um, and no better way to explain that that's not my definition of guilty pleasure at all. Okay. Uh, what's your definition of guilty pleasure? So uh, what I wanted was the Rene Fuego or the Alfa Milano that Casey mentioned last week, but I couldn't find them anywhere. And then what AMC, I did. AMC. AMC. You know, I had an 81 spirit. Uh, oh, wait, where am I going? And uh, Opal. I settled on this. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, really, oh. really what mm -hmm. I want? Oh, I disappeared. Oh, Sorry. my God. Hold on. What is that, a Shamal? Yeah. On, the bike that's, that's the second generation Ghibli, actually. Oh, um, Ghibli, not a Shamal? All those Maseratis that era look exactly the same. Because they're yeah. the same car. <laughs> they are the same. Wait, so, so what's your choice, Jonathan? The bi-turbo? Oh, my, my choice is the bi-turbo. 86 oh, bi-turbo. Because, oh, because for me, it was what would be a ridiculous, like absurd thing to buy, especially for, what is this? How many thousands? 11,000 or 9,000, whatever it is, 80 something. Because it was like, this car is going to, what, 80, 590. This car is going to be miserable. Uh, but... What better way to play Miami Vice than with one of these? I don't know what these oh are. Trophies. Uh, yeah, a trophy. Oh my God. It's an automatic. It's an automatic. Oh. Yes, it is. Oh, buddy. <laughs> it's the power windows and air conditioning? It's too oh. good to be true. Okay, can we stop for a second? Jonathan, your picture disappeared. Oh, I'm not there. Oh. Well, I, I think I think the Zoom app is too ashamed of him to let him back, come back on. <laughs> the background's still there, but not him. I think. Hold on. Okay, Jonathan's back. So, uh, I mean, three uh, dual, uh, God, whatever, Weber carb, uh, dual barrel Weber carb. This was the first year of the uh, air, uh, the water cooled turbos before they were oil cooled, which was what, also misery. What year is this one? This one's eighty six. Okay, so, so it was still yeah. carbureted. They hadn't gone fuel injected. Exactly. Yet. The, the next the 87, they went uh, fuel injected. Um, and it's like, this was a car that was kind of supposed to battle the three series, um, was priced in between the, the three and the five, but they sold, I think in eight years, like 20,000 of them worldwide. Because... Um, <laughs> It was miserable. <laughs> and it, well, it, everything broke on them, right? It had the turbocharged, it has a turbocharged V6, right? Exactly. 2.5 liter for export, just for the US, 2.5 liter turbocharged V6. Uh, the Europeans had a two liter. And we had a bigger engine and got less power. But look at that interior. I mean, oh, geez. That, that is why you had boats of Coke coming in from Colombia, so you could own one of these. <laughs> it's funny, the taillights look like they're stolen up an E30, but they also kind of look like a like a 190E, like they're just very derivative right. taillights. Uh, uh, oh. look, at, look, at how the, look at how the parking brake is buried in there. It's like you have to like, you know, use like a hook to get to the parking brake. <laughs> uh, look, I think it's, it's scooped out there so you can put your hand underneath the parking brake. The seat the seats are in amazing condition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody wanted to be seen actually in it. So I would I have a feeling this has been redone. Does it have leather covering the bars under the headrest? That is weird. <laughs> what, oh, yeah. gators, you, what do you think the owner of this is a headrest? headrest supports? That's right. Never seen um, 
And the the Roadster was a two seater, whereas the bi turbo had a it was a two plus two. And then they the four thirty was the sedan. They made a sedan. Well, they yeah. Well, they changed the name because, well, what I'd read was they changed the name because the by eighty seven the reputation was so garbage <laughs> that they wanted to get out of the bi turbo name. Uh, so they changed it to the, the 430, 425. Um, and then you've got negotiator. <laughs> I don't even know what this is, like ego <laughs> or ego. Go. So the clean, first man. car with negotiators, I think you presented. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but it won't be the last because these are, <laughs> these are amazing. <laughs> I like that Zagato badge there too. Well, Zagato built the spiders. Maserati yeah. built the uh, the coots. Okay. Zagato uh, built the spiders. So the spiders must be really rare. I just I just want to I want to note that those are probably the ugliest floor mats in the history of floor mats. <laughs> are you <laughs> kidding? Not, me? They don't really match, do they? Uh, no, they're completely contrasting. Those are Amazon those. buys. Do you recognize the climate control panel? What car? What brand? Also, what is what what brand is that shared with? It's wow. got to be a Chrysler product. Right? Chrysler. 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 There's a John Phillips has an amazing story that involves a yacht in Monaco regarding the bi turbo launch. Um, and I, I can't remember all of it, but it basically culminates with they knew it wasn't great. They never drove the car, they just stayed on the yacht the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. It was like, it was like, no, 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 let's stay on this yacht in Monaco. <laughs> Typically, the more extravagant the press trip is, the worse the car. Well, and that was also kind of distracting. Where I mean, they money was just getting thrown around. I love those awards. Award winner. I think those are fourteen-inch wheels. This has tiny little wheels on it. The stripes. Uh, are those, are those red stripes factory, or is that an add-on? Uh, that that I think that's factory. I think they were added. I think he added it to match the floor mats because the red stripe doesn't continue to the front of the car or to the back. It's just it's just the center. Oh, true. Yeah, it's just that side panel. Hmm. But you know, the thing that's interesting to me is also if you look at this guy, this dealership, it's like the land of misfit toys. There, I mean, you got like a, a you got like a, a if, you, if you go to some of the other shots, you have a like a, a El Camino on twenty inch wheels, and you have like a. a there's a Nissan Cube in there, I think. Nissan well, I have, Cube, and I mean, yeah, I have a feeling the I have a feeling the Panamera belongs to the owner, and the rest he uh, flogs off to the. Oh, yeah. You mean Mr. Sabetti? Yeah, and there, oh, there, look, there's a there's one of the, the Malibu. There's one of the first generation Malibus. Um, second, second generation. Well, not even really, because they're all the old Malibus too. What are you talking about? No, no, I would not be surprised that, if this car has like three hidden compartments somewhere that you've got to uh, pull like a cigarette lighter and the emergency brake to open. To, but, yeah. hide, more, to hide the trophies? <laughs> yeah. That's the, the trophies. The trophies. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what we're hiding, officer. <laughs> say, the, original, the original floor mats aren't in there because somebody's still shaking them out. <laughs> <laughs> ding, How many ding. miles on this thing? How many miles yeah, on this thing? I can't see. Know. 49,000. Um, 49,548. Those must have been very I mean, like, expensive miles. I don't, that's, the small, that's the smallest subwoofer I've ever seen. It's not a subwoofer. Nope. Yeah, I don't think it's a sub. I think that's just a, I think that's just a regular speaker. Yeah, it's I know. Form. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's positioned like a subwoofer for, you know, the back. Well, there's probably no right. speakers in the car. Um, I know that. Yeah, that, okay, that, that might be the only speaker in the car, yeah. <laughs> actually. Why are there floor mats in the back, though? <laughs> yeah, nobody's sitting back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point, Casey. That's interesting. <laughs> All I, right. come with a good, I come up with a good observation oh. every now and again. <laughs> that would be my... For the... For the 3,000 miles it would run for all the time I had it, <laughs> that would be my guilty pleasure. Well, the best thing that would happen is you keep it for the summer, then it catches fire like late fall, and then you just collect the insurance. And all right, well, hurry. I hope Nationwide never sees this episode because that's exactly <laughs> what's about to happen. <laughs> all right, uh, Joey, you want to go next? Sure. I do have a soft spot for these 90s GM SUVs. and. <laughs> I like this generation specifically because I think the styling is just so clean. And also I had a babysitter when I was a kid who had a Tahoe of this generation. And it's just like, I remember it being so big and comfortable and like- oh, Wait a minute, you, you rode to school in a Jaguar. Your, your <laughs> babysitter took you around in errands in her Tahoe of the generation. That, 
But he also well, had compared to my dad's Corolla, they all thought uh, like, you know, my box. He also had a babysitter with a Rav Four, so a lot yeah, of they made a big impression on me. They formed his opinion of cars. Yes, helped form his opinion of. Cars. So I think that's the reason I have a soft spot for these this generation. This this, one, this suburban is remarkably clean. Yeah, it's in really good shape. Where is this located? This is in Ohio, Columbus area. Mm. This, this is the GMT four hundred platform. Wow. These are like. Yeah. This, this is the classic uh, GM truck platform. And I feel like this is when these SUVs started to get more like livable, you know, like more luxurious, they, you know. Yeah, well, these were also, yeah, this is, I mean, this is when uh, uh, GMC came, I, Denali didn't launch on these, but. Denali was the next generation. Yeah, but there was like a, there was like a really luxurious, there was like a really luxurious uh, uh, Tahoe version, I remember. Well, it was and look, first, look how first they went all out. The first Escalade was a GMT 400. Well, I think it was in 96 pumped power up substantially because I think before that they were like 210 horsepower. And it got a lot of the upgrades that the LT1 got. And it got, it got the, tr the truck, the truck LT1, basically. Right. Yeah, but the truck, I don't, I don't think, I don't think the truck, I don't think the truck small blocks had the reverse cooling system like the LT1s had and different fuel injections. That was important. <laughs> right. But, but they did get the better heads. Yeah, they got the much better heads. The Vortec heads up, are better. Yeah, they bumped up output from like 200 nothing to 255 and made them legitimately move under their own power. Yeah. But they also, they also this, this is the last, I think this is the one of the GMT 400s were the last vehicles that GM sold with the classic uh, small block Chevy V8 in them. They, you know, they used the, uh, with the Siamese valves, uh, the Siamese exhaust ports. And uh, I don't think they've had, uh, I don't think this is the last, this thing's the last one. Of the next, because the next, uh, the next trucks got um, the versions of the LS engine. Right, they were LSs. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. I would feel. I do feel guilty about this because, like, it's so big. It gets horrible mileage. You know what? What's the point? But like, it's so good at what it does. You kind of have to appreciate it. Did you happen to look for a um, uh, uh, a twenty five hundred? I found a couple of those. I don't know. I mean, they're, the idea of it is really cool, but I I don't like the way they look so much. So I love the ones with like the the phone dial wheels. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I did find a couple, but they they're even more expensive. A lot of them were yeah yeah over budget. I just remember I remember driving these back in the '90s, and they were just the best adventure machines you could possibly have. If you want to go on the road for five days or something else like that, they were great. Yeah, yeah we used it's to put people so in the third row and do donuts in them. They were great. Yeah. yeah, they're really comfortable. You can just rest your hand on the shifter in drive and operate the radio. It's beautiful. Oh, you mean because it's placed? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a. The, the, but you know, I have to say is that the uh, the ones I've been in lately. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The ones I've been in lately have taken on an unusual leather melting smell. <laughs> a leather what smell? Leather. leather uh, yeah, I heard leather smell. melting. <laughs> you know, like the le like the leather is like dissolving. Well, the leather's not uh, very nice in these. I mean, it's like the most plasticized leather you've seen yeah. in your life. Okay, the other reason that this is a guilty pleasure car for me is because it has all these... Okay, so I hate pinstripes. I hate these window deflector things. I hate running boards. But somehow on this car, it works. Like, yes, but Curly will, tell you, Curly will tell you that's exactly what you want because clearly an older gentleman has owned this car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it completes the look. And I really think it... it this, is, this, is def this is definitely right out of the estate sale. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it says one owner, and it seems like it's lived a good life. It doesn't have that many miles for how old it is. Yeah, the, the one, the one, own, the one owner is passed on to his reward, and it's you, and you're the winner. All right, Joey. I don't oh, know. How... Can I tell that? I I don't want to tell that story. Don't tell the story. No, don't don't no, tease no. and then not tell it. No, no, no. no, no. It's, yeah, it's, let's it's, go to the next person. Uh huh. Let's yeah. go to the next person. We're moving on. Okay, moving on, moving on. Probably a good story. All right, Pearly. Time for you to tell your story. Here we go. This is my choice is the fabulous. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. That's not the car you're buying though, Pearly. No, 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 no. Of course it is. <laughs> As you told it has me, an intro. A long intro. <laughs> my, this is my intro, the VW Type 4, the last air-cooled Volkswagen car. Hmm. And it's extremely difficult to find no matter what Tony says. And this is the one yeah, look at all those. There's like a million for sale, and you. <laughs> There's not a million for sale. This is like one of the few for sale. They're all on the Samba. And so, this what's one... your guilty pleasure, tetanus? <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I, I think this one's. I, you know, I hate to use the word patina, but this is genuine patina. 
I would leave it looking exactly this way. It's otherwise a, a solid car. Where these came with 68 horsepower when they were carbureted, 80 horsepower when they were uh, thing, and they were terrible in every conceivable way. This is exactly what my definition of what a guilty pleasure is, which is, is what fuel injected. They, they originally fuel injected. This one has been rejected down. Has been re, has been deconverted back to a carburetor. Oh my God! In the first paragraph, this guy is talking about his Z-Bart rust protection. Right. <laughs> Didn't oh work. My God. Yeah. But the good thing, the good thing about True. these is that this car, this car was a you know a pioneered a lot of things for for Volkswagen. This is the first Volkswagen with McPherson strut front suspension. It was the first unibody, and it was the car that was sold so terribly it convinced them to go water cooled. So the, the spelling of through is the one that that stopped me. But I don't, I don't, I'm no rust through, yeah, yeah. Right. So, Why are you feel guilty about it? Because this is this, my my definition of a guilty pleasure is a car that nobody could understand why you like it. You know, you say this is the what I bought, and they go, "What the hell were you thinking?" <laughs> and this is a car you bought it. Nobody would, everyone would think I was nuts. I mean, okay, or okay, nuttier than they already. You got the guilty part down. What's the pleasure part? <laughs> I think I think it's I think it's an interesting car historically because it's the last air cooled VW. It made it paved. Wait, 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 what before. do you mean it's the last air cooled VW? I mean they made, made Beatles, Beatles up until like 2003. It. It's the last one they designed. It's the last one okay. they designed. The last newly designed one. Okay. You know, that's the, that's the last one. This is our last gasp to try and keep up with everybody else by using an air cooled design. And it failed. That, that trunk is so clean. I don't understand. And look at it. It's, it's, you know, the thing is, who, who do you think designed this body? Who wait, do you a think minute, wait a minute. Oh, okay. okay. Never mind. So you're calling like uh, Vanigans? Vanigans used a version of this engine that they designed. And this engine. This yeah, engine, that came, that's an air-cooled VW after this one, I think is what Casey's point is. Yeah, no, that's yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Right. But and the thing is is that you you know you know what sports car you <laughs> but it's you not a car. It's, it's not a car. I think that's Pearly's point. That's the the point. Fair, 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 fair enough. Okay, moving right along. And what what was and Ooh, what, and nice what Westy. Okay, what engine what 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 car sorry, what sports car uses this engine? Uh, Carmen Gia. What? The Carmen Ghia. No, sports Nine, car, real sports car. 912? No. 914? 914. Thank you very much. Yes. You're so young, too. <laughs> and I mean, why, I don't understand why somebody would complain about owning this. Like, this car is fantastic to me. <laughs> Jonathan, like, I don't like what's, what's guilty about this. I think that that's a red flag, the fact that Jonathan likes it. Oh my! Oh, of, no, all it, it looks of all people, <laughs> oh my god! This, this, is, this is a car. This is a car that you know hasn't held its value, that nobody is collecting. It's <laughs> it's a complete, complete one hundred percent orphan it's car. Nobody it's loves it. it, so therefore, how I much do. is it? How much is it? Fifty five hundred dollars. That That's car cost more than my Buick, and you're telling me it didn't hold its value? <laughs> you know, how <laughs> much <laughs> is new? They were like three grand new. Pearly, go through the photos, please. Yeah, I appreciate it. Here it goes. There you go. Now that's patina. Keep scrolling. Mm. Mm. So what you, do? you wouldn't paint it. You just clear coat this and keep. I just clear coat. It. I fix the interior. <laughs> clear coat it. it, and you'll be vaccinated from COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's got everything, then, huh? Leave it on the engine. What is that, what is that picture with underneath the the undercarriage with just the two tubes and the bolt? Like, what were they? What were they trying to show there? Where I don't know. If, if you go back um, where the where the cursor is. Oh, down, down, it's just, more, it's down. just a rust area that doesn't have rust. Doesn't have rust. Left. It, it, it is a clean. I mean, it does. It looks like actually the structure. It's just surface rust. Surface <laughs> rust. <laughs> That's what they all say. I know. What year is this? What year? This is, I think, a seventy-one. This first year. But they want fifty-five hundred for that. But that's definitely gone up in value. Does it run? What they're going to get are two different things. Does it run? Yes. <laughs> it runs. It's always worth asking. It's condition good. It's a condition three good. Good. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, uh, that's enough of this. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, I want to, you know, the thing is that it, it was it was the first four door Volkswagen. It looks, it, it, who did the styling? Who did the styling? Tony? Is this Zara? No. No. It's it's Pininfarina it's design. That's Pininfarina's mm -hmm. ugliest design. Well, they had a lot of dogs. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't all hits. This is this, when it first came out in Europe. They had these headlights, which I would switch to. Of course, you would. Uh, Make it even worse. <laughs> I think 
you know, if this, if you want to go for a guilty pleasure, this is the guiltiest pleasurist of them all. Thank you yeah. very much for, for, for listening to me today. Have a very nice day. Thank you. Thank I think, you that, for I think you've got better well. hair. You've got better hair than that model, Curly. <laughs> yes, I do. All right. You look more, right. more like an English professor every week, Curly, and I love it. You really think so? Yeah. I wore a shirt with a collar today, so I didn't look like I was a complete you know, loser, like a, a homeless guy wandered in in front of a microphone. We're going to have to get you some sort of um, blazer so you can look more professional. <laughs> I'm not buying a blazer. I, there are certain I things said we'll get, get like. you one. I didn't, I didn't expect you to buy one. Oh, no, he's brushing his hair again. <laughs> we need <laughs> We that happened in a really early episode. <laughs> <Someone> <laughs> All right, Casey, you're up to bat. I'm up. All right. How did you so, define guilty pleasure? Are you more guilty or is it more of a pleasure? Uh, it, I, too, I'm kind of in the I'm kind of in the in the Joey camp where it uh, you know it's something I feel guilty about owning, and I own one. I mean, I own this I own this absurd pickup truck that. Um, uh, you know, it gets horrible fuel economy and, and, um, everything else. And I thought about replacing it with something newer that's similar. Um, and, but I, I didn't like that as much because eh, it's still not that much fun. Um, but, um, equally, uh, guilty Ooh. is a, is a grand Cherokee SRT eight, uh, the first gen, um, Horrible fuel economy. I'm not really into SUVs. I would never, uh, I don't really think I'd ever own an SUV. Um, but uh, this would be a guilty pleasure owning this. Um, these were remarkably quick in the day, although I did notice this car is a Canadian big car. crit. Oh, man. What? Sorry. Oh, oh big crit? <laughs> Playing on the stereo. My yeah. guy. <laughs> um, Nittos. Uh, is, I don't think those wheels were originally black. No, and you can see like it, it was it was it was curbed there. They're there was forged. another one. Yeah, they're forged wheels. Huh? They're forged. Are they? Yeah, it says Alcoa forged. Oh, nice. Um, Four hundred twenty-five uh, horsepower. What's that? Four hundred twenty-five horsepower. Is this a six-one? Wait, what? What's yeah, these were this, these were six ones. Yeah, this why is are we looking months. at a bongo friendy? I'm not <laughs> meaning to. Sorry, sorry. What's that trouble code? Oh, what? Oh. Uh, uh, there's a trouble code. So he's got a tuner on it, which would be like the first thing that I would get rid right. of. Um, uh, but uh, it's got a, it's got a tuner on it, and it, it throws a it's a lean uh, lean uh, warning every now and again that I would I would immediately get rid of. Okay, so uh, these are if we scroll down through our old issue. Ooh, that Camry. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, these were, um, you know, 420 horse, uh, 4, 5 to 60, which in 2006 was, you know, unheard of for an SUV. Um, How quick? 4, 5? Four, 4, 5 to 60. Oh, yeah. wow. which is it's funny that it lost this test because I feel like the Trailblazer, the Trailblazer won, right? Yeah, and but you know, I feel like the both Tony and I, Tony and I so were in the appealing. office, and they, this was debated. Who did this? And, did, and they didn't put that in the in the lows. They didn't put the toe thing in the lows. The late Tony Swan and Larry Webster were on this one. But I feel like the Trailblazer now is so unappealing. Like even if it was maybe better then, like the, Jeep the Trailblazer cool has the Trailblazer now. ever been appealing? The SS <laughs> well, was the SS apparently was. in that yeah. test it was <laughs> Trailblazer. Yeah. These, these had two epically bad interiors. Oh, yeah. They're... Yeah, the Jeep interior. That was the one thing when I started looking through photos of, of other lists, and I was like, oh, man. this." But you'll see this was a Canadian car, um, judging by the, oh, the Celsius. Um, the, oh, the Celsius. Yeah. And I'm also a little concerned that the owner dials it all the way to cold instead of just setting the thermostat. No, he's um, got it off. Or I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. I see what you're But doing. when he turns it on, it's probably just going right to high, not to auto. Well, he's going. Yeah. He's going right to the defroster, just because if he lives in in Canada, that's the first thing you do with the car every. Well, morning. the car's in Arizona right now, so these are these are the most arcane concerns I have ever heard <laughs> was like, about buying a car. <laughs> like, wow! It's the way that the air conditioning dials are set. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Something about the owners. Their heads. We're just trying to figure out what they're thinking. 
You said something about the owner, but you know, um, you said when, you, when you're looking at and you're looking at a used car, you shop. You don't shop the car. You shop the owner. Is this a two wheel drive or four wheel drive? These are four wheel drive. These are great too. Yeah, when you brake torque them, like the whole the whole thing just goes like, you know, it kind of like cants up. Um, do these do these still have solid axles in the front, or were they uh, independent suspension? Independent. Uh, yeah, I think it was independent front. Yeah, solid okay. in the rear. Yeah, and I'm not. I don't know where they. I don't know where the guilt is with this because I would never. I would never own uh, uh, an SUV like this. Oh, right. So it's this. It's very personal. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Weren't you? Don't you own a minivan? Or we were discussing minivans at some point. Do I do. Not... I don't own a minivan. Um, okay. My wife owns an SUV. We're currently selling. If anybody would like to buy it. Um, what is it? Ah. So, so it's, a, it's a 2018 Volvo uh, uh, XC60 ah. CPO. It's got a great warranty until uh, 2025. All right, no free ads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's going to be next week. It's just going to be my list. <laughs> or, exactly. We're suddenly going to do a Volvo SUV episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's guilty because it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it, like I said, it's it's a personal thing. Like I would. I, I just would, remember uh, these things having the most atrocious fuel economy ever. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, like, like single digits. Yeah. Like if I was really in the market for, you know, uh, um, you know, like an American kind of go fast sedan type thing, I'd look for a Magnum or a 300C of of this vintage before. Uh, before mm. going to the SUV. Yeah, I was surprised this makes five fewer horses in the SUV than it did in the SRT8 Magnum and uh, 300C SRT8. Yeah. Probably we tested. Exhaust systems routed. We tested. Well, yeah, and I think that is part of it. We tested. I can't remember if it was Hennessy or, or somebody else, but they put a tur they, they turbocharge it and they put the turbocharger all the way back. I think it was just in front of the rear axle. And um, and ran no intercooler back up to the intake, and basically because the path was so long, um, it, it kind of said, "Yeah, we don't need to intercool it. it, it it's cooling enough just to, just being in the in a big long pipe going back up to the intake. Lots of lag in that one." Yeah, I would think so. All right, thanks, Casey. Yeah, you guys want to see the winner? We, we already we've already did. Seen. We already have my four eleven. <laughs> Cobalt. Yeah, really. SS. Oh, oh my God. Do you guys remember what, the Cobalt SS? And this is the turbo one, not the supercharger. Hold on. Define, one. define, yeah. define guilty pleasure. Define is, guilty is that V rod? Is that a mural painted on the side of it, or is that just a reflection? It's just That's a paint. reflection. No, it's a reflection. It'd it be only better if it was a mural. Pleasure, it only has 19,000 miles on it. Yes. So for me, wow. this is a car that I would, you know, it's a, it's a performance Cobalt and it's a great performing car. It's a wonderful front wheel drive car. I drove this car at lightning lap and it held the front drive lightning lap record for years. Yeah. And years. Like until very recently. Yeah. It, it, and it also in its price category, it held the record um, in its price bracket. So it has a 260 horsepower, 2.2 liter turbo engine. Two shared, liter, isn't it? Shared with Sobs, shared with... Um, the Solstice had this engine, the Solstice GXB had this engine, um, but the Cobalt got its own tuning um, for, the, for the throttle. So these are really responsive, they're really nice. The chassis is spectacular, Heinrich did the chassis. And for me, it's a guilty pleasure because you'd be owning a Cobalt and everyone would be like, why do you drive a Cobalt? But with you that wing know. too, you would have a car with that wing There's on. There's a lot to be guilty about. There's <laughs> and gauge pods. They had the gauge pots on the A pillar, but they were also they were branded autometer. But from the factory, these are factory right. gauges. Oh, I forgot that thing was factory. That little like uh, um... the yeah the RPD the reprogrammable pod display. Or... Yeah, I yeah. Don't want to mess with the regular cobalt gauge clusters, they just stuck them on. Yeah, like, exactly. And that, but that's but they, like but... You can you can get like all your OBD two information on there, all the temperatures. You can look at you can set <laughs> shift speeds. It has the, they were all manual transmissions. It has a five speed from the Saab. It's just a fantastic car. Ooh, easy with what's, the what's fantastic. guilty about it, Tony? What's guilty about it? Just that it's this GM small car? It's a Cobalt. I mean, it has that oh, horrible right. interior. So when the Cobalt came out, they sort of patterned the interior after the generation four Golf and Jetta, which was about to go out of production. 
and then they executed it with terrible materials. You know, I was on the long lead for this with my friend Scott Oldham driving, and he was driving along, and the key broke, and the ignition key cylinder broke. Oh, yeah. Like, well, that's this, this, this was part of that lawsuit, yeah. Foreshadowing. Right. But this was on the long lead. This was on the long lead. Yeah, so right, like, right when it came out, it was already broken. Yeah, we thought it could. Well, that's just anomalous, and it turned out to be a giant thing. So I want you guys to take note of, speaking of the buyer, he's put what I- Oh, he's put Michelin's on it. Pilot Sport wow. for S's. That's a nice tire for that car. So it's this yeah. tire. So he selected this really great tire. Um, and then he, but he also has this aftermarket radio. So I found an, a Chevy Cobalt. Guess how much a Chevy Cobalt radio from this era costs? $300. $84. $84.99. It's like $12 shipping. You're all $80. covered. <laughs> Whoa. I was closest. <laughs> Oh my God! Free yeah, shipping. but too too bad when they installed when uh you know when whatever shop installed that other radio they like cut the harness out of it. That's probably a mess back there right now. Oh, who knows? I don't know. Let's not let's not uh, <laughs> not worry oh, too much about that. Uh, I mean, he, why did the yeah, owner I'm, I'm, couldn't be bothered couldn't be bothered to pull the car out to take photos? He didn't he want to put more in, miles on it. I think. I mean, it's, it. It has a million more miles, right? Yeah. Nineteen thousand. <laughs> That's super low. And when you reverse, you know, miles come down. That Ferris Bueller should have taught you that. Well, the, the guy, What's the, the guy G85 has... The G85 package? Smells new. What's the G85 package? I don't know. <laughs> Price is firm. That's, that's his imagination, is what the G85 package is. That, that looks like he has a Harley Sportster, too. Oh, my God. Quick, what's in his search history? <laughs> With what exactly? Nobody knows that, that question. Uh, limited slip. Oh, okay. LSD. Yeah, that guy. That guy said LSD engine. Retaro seats. Oh, but for the 07, they no longer have the seats, but they have the Quave LSD. So there you go. Oh. Limited slip. <laughs> It's from a 13-year-old form post, so we know it's authoritative. <laughs> <laughs> Is Honestly, it that old? Forms are trustworthy. I would go with the form. Yeah. But yeah, you get, I mean, you get the cobalt, the terrible cobalt interior, and you get a car that looks like a Chevy cobalt, but handles like a Lotus. I mean, I feel like- It doesn't like handle like a Lotus. That's going to- Front cool. drive Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> it does. They're spectacular. No, they're, they, are, they handle really well. I, they but do. This, 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 this is Tony, this is Tony Caroga, the same guy who was on Front Drive Lotuses, so I guess I have to defer to him. <laughs> we can trust yeah, this is probably a better handler than an M100 Alon, for sure. I mean, have you, have you looked up the values? Is 12 grand? That seems like a that lot of money. High. So they didn't make a lot of these, Jonathan. And for a super low mileage one like this, I don't think it's out of line. Most of them had 100 to 150,000 miles and were around five to seven grand. They didn't make a lot of they didn't make a lot of Renault Fuegos either. And uh, but if somebody wanted twelve grand for one, that's I, I would. There was a Renault Fuego Turbo with nineteen thousand miles and the G eighty five package. <laughs> I just I just like the cinder block building in which it sits. It looks like something where you'd be held hostage. It's a dungeon. I think yeah. the G eighty five package from now on should be, just be for any car. It's a secret package. You don't know what's in it, but it's really good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like three three episodes from now. I'm gonna be like, that's a G85. <laughs> <laughs> they got G85. All right. Um, now we've come to the part of the show where we judge each other's picks and pick our favorites, and then crown a winner. <laughs> and uh, Casey has a quite the streak going, so we'll see how this ends up. Um, it's not, I'm not gonna do well. Jonathan, you went first, right? <laughs> I went first with my Maserati '86 Maserati by Turbo Spider. Oh, God, no way. Thank you. Oh, terrible. <laughs> What? So I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get a spite thumbs down. Well, no, no, look, I, all three of you, explain yourselves. It's, it's ugly. It's guilty. it's guilty. It's not a pleasure. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a lot of pleasure in, in owning that. Wait, hold on. I thought, I thought we were defining, like, I thought I defined guilty pleasure. Yeah, we don't, we don't accept you for who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. You know, there's, I mean, a there's, a there's a difference there's a difference between pleasure and masochism. No, I love it, Jonathan. I think it's a great choice. I think you nailed guilty pleasure. Oh, God. How is that not masochism, Burley? An 86 <laughs> Maserati. 
How is that not masochism? That is masochism. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, not, it's not a pleasure. It's masochism. What you, don't believe, you don't believe in my pleasure. You don't believe in my pleasure? <laughs> I'm saying one man's masochism is another one man's, man's torture. Masochism does not make another man's pleasure. I can't what if I, yeah. what if I like pain? What if, what if I was in that in that dungeon with that cobalt? That's and that's good for you. That's why it's not a thumbs up for me. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, Jonathan, what was your favorite car? The cobalt SS? <laughs> None of you. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm I said, here, oh here comes God. the spike. Um, uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm actually gonna go with that 411. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> hey, hey, <Bye>. calm down, <laughs> calm down. But I win. I'm gonna. I'm gonna that go was, that sounded like it was as much of a Sophie's choice of any of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> that's where we are. All right, um, Joey, you went next, right? Yeah, my GMC Suburban. Yeah, I it's, a, it's a car I've, I liked, but I can't. I can't think of it. I can't think of it as a guilty pleasure. But yeah, exactly. people I really hey, like. Hey. What was your favorite, Joey? Four uh, eleven. Four eleven. Yeah, it really is a tough choice. Cobalt SS. Easy. I mean, I'll just say the Cobalt SS because I would. I do want to drive one of those. Just to <laughs> get G eighty five. Owning it. That's the, yeah, that, that's just drive it once. I'll test drive it and then leave it. How old were you in 2005, Joey? It's a 2009. Oh, sorry. How old were you in 2009? You were, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were like 16, right? I was 18. 18, okay, so you're older than I thought. All right, Casey. Oh no, Pearly, you were up next. With the well, this is Joey, you tell us what he likes? He did, it's a Cobalt SS. Cobalt. Yeah, I just wanna drive it one time and then that's it. Okay, all right. Uh, Pearly, 411. 411, with patina. Yeah, I know. You have to give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Reluctantly, but yeah, it's good. It's a good guilty. Oh, Joey doesn't like it. Why didn't you like it, Joey? It's just so awkward looking. I guess maybe that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. I've never seen one in person, so. Well, you're not gonna, you're, there's a good chance you're never going to see one in person. I did. But there's pl did so there, there will be pleasure when I do see it the first time. <laughs> Pearly, I did find a couple of commercials for it, so if you win, the viewers can look forward to that. Oh, well, I do. Well, okay. Uh, then, Harley, what was your favorite car? The Cobalt SS? You know, <laughs> I don't want to say it. The Cobalt. I, I remember the Cobalt SS as being really a, tru <laughs> as, as being a truly, really oh, good car. And, and I, I, I always remember, I, I was old enough when that car was new to be embarrassed by the rear, by the rear spoiler and pleading, pleading for them to give it a, a more reasonable spoiler because I, would, I wouldn't mind driving it. But you know the spoiler makes it just embarrassing enough to be a guilty pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't the cobalt embarrassing enough on its own? Like, did it need a spoiler to be that like to cross yeah, a line this, of embarrassment for you? It needed much, it for the arrow balance. Yeah, that's that makes it more embarrassing. That's all, Jonathan. It's really embarrassing. And you know, I, I always like, I, you know, it's just stupid things, but it's like I got in there and I looked at the A pillar when it had the gauges on. It said auto meter on the gauges. I thought. This is the first small car that makes me proud to have worked for Carcraft Magazine. <laughs> yes, I am too. Okay. All right, Casey. S uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. What do you I couldn't sell it. I couldn't sell it this week. I don't know. I like that one. <laughs> I just can't think. I can't think of it as a guilty pleasure. I think of it as yeah. a. I, I think it's, cool. I mean, it's not. Is, he, well, is it a pretty good used car? See, Tony totally, Tony totally led me astray when we talked about this earlier today because he was like, "Ooh, you're gonna win again," yeah. and Most then he comes in with this. <laughs> oh, no, Tony does that. No, no, I know, I know, I'm, I'm, I know his game. I know. Yeah, well, Jonathan, Jonathan, I worked that out beforehand to make sure you don't win again. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I mean, well, but it is a point. Right. I don't see the... the Yankees don't win every game. <laughs> it's all about the pinstripes. Uh, Casey, um, what was your favorite car? Uh, the oh, Suburban. Oh, I get, just for the same for for much the same reason. Like, I mean, I, I that's a guilt that would be a guilty pleasure for me. Also, I have a lot of great memories in. Uh, uh, what's the score? I win. Four eleven has two votes. You have to go I, first. I think you're both tied. I have yeah. two votes. I think. Yeah, I think it's tied. I mean, I could have. Uh, if you want me to pick between the whoa, 411. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're rigging, you're rigging it now. But Tony, you have to pick Tony your... can't vote for himself. So that's true. 
So well, he's only gonna. Me, so I win. Well, I was actually, I was actually gonna vote for Jonathan. Wait, 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 wait. How does he? Have to... No, no. Thank how... you. Yes. No, nobody. Did... That. No, no. We're we're too stuck in technicalities. We wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who voted for? Who voted for the four eleven? Raise your hand. Yeah, and who voted for the Cobalt SS? Me and Pearly. Yeah. So, oh, Cobalt so, SS, so Tony wins. Been. Tony wins. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but the thing is, we have commercials for the 412, 411, 412, so we should really both vote it to win because I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the rules on this entire game show are pretty thin. No, they're, they're like that thing that what did Drew Carey used to say on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Welcome to the show where the rules are made up and the points don't matter. Yeah, that's yes. right. That's exactly what happened this week. With... All right, let me see some thumbs for the Cobalt SS. I'm taking my cup. I feel like that's a victory by thumbs down. <laughs> I'm, take, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm, re, I'm, re, I'm retracting my two, my cobalt SS vote. It's too late. It's locked in. As long it's as it's been long counted as been and certified, Pearly. But I, I think I think Jonathan nailed it. I think Jonathan got it this week. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know how I. He, he, how... he picked the car that. He picked, he picked the masochist special. That doesn't count. It's not relevant. It's a guilty pleasure. Ugh. I don't have ple pleasure. Where's the pleasure? Where's the pleasure? Looking at it, driving... collecting the insurance money after it burns to the ground. It's stuck to drive. It's an automatic. If you don't have Testarossa money, there is no better 80s awesomeness to get than a Maserati. Yeah, party. did you see the leather oh, on the headrest yeah. supports? What about a Fox Body Mustang? What about a, there's a million. Oh my God. Yeah, there's, no. a, there's a no, bunch not, of great there's 80s no, cars. There's no guilt. There's no guilt what, in a Fox what, what Body What about a 959? What about a 288 GTO? If you all don't have cars you listed, money. All those cars you've listed weren't built by Zagato. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's and there's that. I think, I mean, yeah. an Esprit, an 80s Esprit. Yeah, that's a good 80s car. Wait, so who won? I did. <laughs> Tony, no. Tony, Tony, you won. Tony got two votes. You won. won. won by the thinnest victory. of margins. I'm declaring victory. Tony won. Look, as long as as long as someone else who I won't mention his name um, arrives with Bowell didn't win, I'm I'm fine with whatever <laughs> happens. Now, I'm not going to mention his name, but as long as he, as long as that person didn't win, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. I think we've crowned a winner. We'll be looking for some commercials to run after this. And um, if you enjoyed the lightning lot video, what's it? I don't think we have videos. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. They'll be yeah. pretty. They'll probably be two forty or one forty four. So please excuse the quality. <laughs> you, know, you know how long? You know how long I've written for for car and driver. I've written for car and driver for almost twenty two years. You know how many times I've been to lightning lap? Zero. <laughs> Why would Zero. you need to go? Why would you need to go? You want to go? Because I'm the hot shoe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to see it, honestly. Have you, have you, okay, consider yourself invited next year. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, um, hey, uh, with, that, car. with that invitation, that brings us to the end of this episode. And um, if you enjoyed this, please throw us a like and uh, subscribe. Us, subscribe, and um, we'll see you, you next year. Send us cash. We'll take that, too. Despite genetic similarities, siblings often harbor tension between each other. This can result in provocation against the older counterpart. But these are merely attempts to discover his place in the family. Cobalt. The new commotion coming to the Chevy family.